The world is going to smell very different once electric vehicles become commonplace. Automobiles were originally hailed as a non-polluting transportation solution, because they didn't shit all over the place. As one who grew up before catalytic converters were a twinkle in the eye of rare earth mining corporations, the world is far cleaner, odor-wise, already. But yes, I imagine the shift to EVs will be a similar step. I grew up with coal fires for domestic heating, winter fog could be tasted. So I live in a desert city with 800k people and a total of 2.3 million people with an adjoining city added. Our overall air quality is horrible with the dust and pollution. I went up to very rural Alaska for about two weeks last summer and the cleanliness and crispness of the air was absolutely amazing. Anyone who is old enough already knows it. Cars nearly don't smell that hard as they used to. That old school smell of petrol and motor oil is only to be found at old timer car events these days. Will children still make vroom vroom noises with toy cars? I remember when cigarettes were banned in UK pubs. The stink of ale soaked carpets was almost as bad. I wonder what the background stink of towns and cities is? Apartments facing boulevards are gonna skyrocket in price, heard a weird noise behind me one day and I turned around to see a spark stopping, then watched it drive away with barely hearing the sound of the tires on the asphalt. Those things are so quiet it's insane. I know people are saying cars don't smell that bad, but for me it's the buses and trucks. When that bus pulls away from light and you're walking past, you get a lung full of black crap, when they're all electric it will be amazing. It will sound a lot different as well. Humans become accustomed to the noise in the city and a lot of that noise will go away without fossil fuel cars and diesel trucks. It already does. I was four years old when the first catalytic converters came out. All the existing cars from before then ran on leaded gasoline with no significant pollution controls to speak of. The exhaust stank to high heaven, it literally contained lead, and it was everywhere. 1970s pollution controls weren't great but they were progress. The German cars switched to fuel injection to meet the requirements, while everything else tacked on a bunch of stuff to burn the wasted fuel that the carburetors left behind. Carbureted vehicles lost so much power, and fuel-injected ones gained so much power, that by 1979 a fuel-injected Volkswagen had more power than a British sports car. The V8 Corvette had around 140 horsepower. It was comedy. Eventually everyone pulled their heads out of their asses and switched to fuel injection and the engines got a lot better as a result, and the rest is history. To this day it astonishes me every time I'm sitting in traffic surrounded by idling cars and I can't smell the exhaust. That, my friends, is progress. TBH the difference between new modern cal-spec gasoline cars and electric cars is nowhere near as big as the difference between old leaded gas cars and modern ones. Considering how many people got COVID, I'd imagine the world already smells very different. Are they that smelly? My main complaint with gas car are the noise TBH. For me, noise pollution is the worst for quality of life in the city. I'm gonna miss the smell of fresh smog in the morning. Said no one. I live in a country where vehicle emissions are strictly regulated. So even at bus stops, the bus exhaust is more like hot air blowing at you. That said, I'm looking forward to the decrease in overall heat as internal combustion engines begin to decrease in number. At least half that smell is brake dust. It's already a million times better than it used to be in the 70s 80s. As a motorcyclist, I get to smell all the smells around me. I can tell you that cars are smelly, and a lot of trucks are smelly. To the point where I could possible smell like them if I'm stuck behind them in traffic for too long. I remember visiting Japan a while ago and I was shocked at how quiet it was, almost everyone there had electric vehicles, and it was in a big city. The air was so clean, for once I actually enjoyed being in a big city without the trademark city smell of death. Not against the environmental cleanse but I'm gonna miss the smell of gas from the stations. Just a different smell up yours is still gonna be there, embarrassed smiley face. Sadly cars, and individuals in general, are a very small part of this problem. Fuck yes I am so ready for that. I recently moved to a city from a small town and oh my I miss the smell of nature and trees. Besides the environmental benefits, having it be 100x quieter would be great. I live right next to a busy road and all day and night it's just constant. But after COVID we won't be able to smell it. I live in the middle of nowhere and it smells like apples most of the time. It actually will. Without disclosing where I've been in my life, 
I've been places where the air smelled downright floral all of the time, everywhere, naturally. It was. It's one of those things that I didn't even realize I was missing out on until it was there. I'd love to recapture that. It was so relaxing. This post is a stark reminder of how disgusting cities are. You should have smelled it in the 60s. We've come a long way. Gonna have that statusy electrical smell to it. The world will hopefully a quieter and cleaner place. And sound different too. As a Northeastern, I was puzzled walking around downtown San Diego this summer. Something is missing, there no street noise. 90% of the vehicles were electric. Can confirm. I swapped to an electric earlier this year. Gas cars now smell noticeably of exhaust. I never knew. The total life cycle carbon footprint of an electric car versus a new city car are very similar and the perceived significant advantage doesn't exist. The process to manufacture the car is the same, and the large battery pack is a very dirty process. Lithium mining is a horror show in undeveloped nations. We will probably not see widespread adoption of all electric cars in the next 20 years, possibly longer. As of the present time, there is not enough electricity available for everyone to have an electric car. The entire electrical infrastructure will have to be modified to account for all the electric vehicles. When looking at rural areas, the fossil fuel vehicles have such a distinct advantage that it basically is unrealistic to have electric vehicles become the majority. The all-electric car shines in urban-slash-metro areas with lots of stop-and-go traffic. NYC is a textbook example. The future of the automobile is more refined hybrids, electric cars will continue to slowly consume market share over time, and the light truck market will probably stay the same for the foreseeable future. Commercial trucks, North America, will slowly adopt technology like hybrid drivetrains, regenerative hydraulics, and improved after-treatment technology. A world dominated by electric cars is a fantasy, it is unlikely to happen in our lifetimes. There will always be a demand for diesel-slash-gasoline-slash-LPG equipment. Military equipment, highway construction equipment, aviation, emergency response vehicles, long-distance freight, etc. etc. Even if the charge time was halved and range was doubled the all-electric car would still struggle to achieve mass adoption in 20 years. Ironically, in my opinion, the same crowd parading electric cars also is anti-nuclear power, which is absurd. Source, Am Automotive Engineer. The thing I hate the most about going green and using electricity for everything is that no nation, that I've heard about at least, is ready for just that. For example, Denmark is currently building a giant energy farm in the form of wind turbines at sea, but due to their power grids not being able to support the amount of power that they produce, they simply cannot continue building it since they basically can't use most of it when it's done and that would be too costly. The US power grids are extremely old and would need an entirely new one, yes, the whole nation, if they want to move forward in this green future. Then comes the problem of actually manufacturing green stuff, but that's an entirely different debate. Kinda like what happened when indoor cigarette smoking got banned in public places. Not really. Most places currently have emission standards, so you won't really smell much difference when there are zero emissions. Start practicing now for new ways to hide your farts. And legal weed. Real question from someone that would love the issues that come from the oil-slash-gas industry, the whole spectrum from war to air to labor issues, to just go away, would it actually ever be better for the environment to go 100% electric, battery-powered transportation? Even 50%? What are the consequences? What are the limit of resources? Where are the resources and how long would they last? I tried to find some real breakdowns that maybe someone has made to at least give an unbiased answer to this, although I understand that not all answers exist or ever will, but haven't found much. Has there been any legit papers written on this that someone would be nice enough to share? I know the data and info will be relatively young, but surely someone has taken a real swing at calculating real-world effects over the course of time slash percent of population that could sustainably use these cars. Air pollution is not only from autos, a major source is from industrial companies. There is a cause and effect for everything. Take the rose-colored glasses off and do a search on the effects of mining for EV vehicles. Oh God we're all going to smell each other. Visit Cairo and you'll smell what it used to be like with all the exhaust fumes. One time when I was a kid my dad took me on a canoe trip to northern Ontario. When I got there I couldn't get over the smell. Daddy what is that smell? 
Sun, that is fresh air.